Hello makers, welcome to 3D Maker Noob. I'm Joe and this right here is the Anet E10. Stick around. Welcome back makers. So a few weeks ago, Gearbest have sent me the Anet E10 for review. Now I have been kind of putting this review off due to the fact that this printer has stirred up quite a bit of controversy and I kind of didn't want to get in the middle of that. However, the printer was sent to me for an unbiased review. It has been sitting here and I thought to myself, I need to unbox this, put this together, run a few test prints and let you guys know what I think. So right out of the box, you have two very small samples of PLA filament. The manual actually looks kind of detailed. It doesn't look that bad. We have torn up paper and what looks like to be some kind of bill tack surface, which is really not, um, looks like kind of like a cheap bill tack surface, but We'll see. Next up we have scraper, box of accessories, which has a PTFE tube, micro SD card reader, and micro SD card, a hot end with the heat block and the nozzle throat, some screws, some T-nuts, some zip ties, Allen keys, screwdriver, and USB cable. Then we have what I am guessing is the base. I'm just gonna take these off. Quite a bit grindy, but that's not something I'm worried about because I've had that on the Anet A8 and it turned out to print quite well. Base seems a bit off. I don't know if that's possibly because of the table, but this is actually sturdy. Next, we have the control box with Cables attached to it, very nicely braided cables, I might add. Um, part cooling fan, which looks 3D printed, but actually looks quite decent. This is the hot end fan. So everything is disassembled. Um, so I'll definitely have to put the thermistor in and the, uh, the heating element, nothing major. This is the screen with the scroll wheel, reset button. This feels quite good. And fuse power switch in the back. Power cable, filament spool holder. And finally, we have the gantry. So we've unboxed the Anet E10, we have assembled the Anet E10, and we threw in some test prints. In between the assembling and the test prints, I had to do some modifications, and I will get to that soon. But first I want to talk about the prints. The first thing I did was throw in a pre-sliced G-code of this chess piece that I have right here. This was printed in filamentum silver, PLA extra fill. No settings whatsoever, just threw in the SD card and started printing. It actually printed quite well, so I was quite happy with the result. It's not impressive, of course, but then again, this is just a chess piece. It's a fairly simple print, 
so I wasn't expecting too much out of it. Next up, I threw in some Rapunzel Silver, also from Filamentum, because I am absolutely loving that filament right now, and I threw in Pegasus by 3D Printed Aspie. It started to print and I stopped it myself. And the reason for that is because I had not set the retractions properly. This is about it. It requires quite a bit of retraction. So I stopped it because I didn't want to waste any filament. After re-slicing the, uh, the model in Simplify 3D, which by the way, I used a standard Anet A8 um, uh, Simplify 3D profile, factory file. I just increased the bed space accordingly. I printed it again. This time the results, Quite impressive, I must say. The print quality is is really, really good. It's not perfect, but it's really good. The slower you print, obviously, the better. This was printed at 50 millimeters a second. Rapunzel Silver is a quite forgiving filament. It, it blends the layers quite nicely. So I was, I was really happy with that print. As always, I wouldn't be me if I don't throw in a 3D Benchy. So I sliced the 3D Benchy and I threw it on the printer. The result was actually, once again, quite impressive. I wasn't expecting the bench to come out as good as it did. It's not perfect, but it came out really, really good. And the layers hold up quite nicely. So I am very happy with the result. Finally, I threw in some filamentive red RPLA and I wanted to print something in vase mode. So I printed this rocket right here. Granted, it is in vase mode. So vase mode prints tend to be always better than normal, but I really wanted to see how it would perform. And the result is actually quite nice. You can clearly see that this printer has some good capabilities in terms of printing, especially in vase mode. So the result was actually quite good and I was very, very happy with that. Having talked about the prints and they're actually really good prints. I have really nothing too bad to say about them. However, when it comes to the printer, there are some things that need to be brought up. Now, just because this comes mostly pre-assembled, it doesn't mean that it was pre-assembled correctly. There are quite a few assembly flaws in this printer and I'm gonna try to list them down. Let's start by talking about the Z-axis stepper motors. Now, the way they are assembled, they have the connectors facing inwards. And what happens is when the bed starts moving back and forth, the wheels that adjust the bed height start hitting on the connector. So the first thing I had to do was undo those and turn them 90 degrees so that the connectors face backwards and they are out of the way. Next up is the heat bed connector. This is pretty much the same exact connector that you have on the ANET A8 and ANET A6, which means that eventually I'm going to be soldering the wires directly onto the heat bed and putting some strain relief because I don't see that holding on for very long, just it didn't with the A8 and the A6. Then there are the rest of the screws. Most of the screws, on this printer are not done well. I would suggest if you get this printer, you go over every single screw in the printer frame because some of them are not tightened well enough. Then you have these two lead screw holders right here at the back, which hold in place the Z-axis lead screw with bearings. Now, the problem is that when these were assembled, they kind of were pushed to the inside and therefore the lead screw was slightly bent. So the, um, the carriage just was not moving freely on the Z-axis. So what I did was I simply un undid the screws and I just kind of left them floating to give the Z-axis lead screw a bit of leeway in terms of movement. I also went through all the connectors for the limit switches and kind of crimped them a bit more tightly because what was happening is that as soon as I put the connector onto the limit switch, it kind of just slides off. So I had to make it a bit more tight so it fits on more securely. And finally, the last thing I promise is the last thing that I'm gonna find for today is that the gantry wasn't actually perpendicular with the printer on the right side of the printer it actually goes further back than the left so what i did was i undid the top screws and i kind of adjusted it slightly to make sure that it's perpendicular and 90 degrees and readjust it and after that 
everything was fine. So what do I think so far as my initial thoughts? Now, I've spent most of the day printing with this printer, as you can see. I have no quarrels in terms of how it works. The interior is nothing special in terms of the control box. For all intents and purposes, this is a different version of an ANET A6. The same electronics, the same board, the same screen. The only difference that is it has a switch. It has a fuse switch, which is always welcome. I would suggest that any upgrades you have done electronically to the ANET A6 or A8 should also be done to this printer. Now this printer has stirred up a lot of controversy because it's touted as being as maybe a CR10 killer, which I assure you it is not. It only tries to look like a CR10, but it is so different in so many ways. It's by no means a bad printer because at the end of the day, it's the print quality that matters and the print quality is there. It's it's quite good. User friendliness, it requires a bit of tweaking here and there, but nothing absolutely major. I probably had much more work to do on the ANET A8 than I did on this in terms of getting it printing right. Um, so it's not all bad, far from it. As for the price point, I think it's selling for about 250 euros. It's there, it's within the price range. I could possibly see this slightly lower than that. I'd say this is more of a 180, 200 euro kind of machine, at least in my eyes. That is it for today, guys. I will eventually do the review for this machine, but what I intend to do is, I'm gonna put this up right against the Tronxy X3. I've been putting off the review for quite some time. So what I'm going to do is kind of like a comparison review of both printers. Whatever I print on the ANET E10, I will print on the Tronxy X3 and then we'll compare them together. Thank you very much for watching guys. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. I will leave affiliate links in the video description for the ANET E10. In the meantime, like, share, subscribe, and as always, happy making, guys.